With boldness let us approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace as a timely help. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, and view us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you, and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before him. Then Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection, or angels, or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst, and take him into the compound. The following night the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness to me in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me, even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights of your right hand forevermore. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, 
that they may also be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God sends his Son into the world that he might gather the brethren scattered in every land. This is alluded to in Caiaphas' prophecy because he was high priest that year, judging it more expedient for one man to die than the whole nation to perish. And John the Apostle, in recounting this, he who was a friend of the high priest and had some access to the deliberations, as he notes in his gospel, considers it a reference not simply to the nation as we might understand it today, namely a political entity, a state in a particular set of boundaries, in a particular place, but rather it includes the diaspora, the scattering of Jews in every nation under heaven, that when Christ is lifted up from the earth, he will draw all to himself, and they will come to see in time, this entails Gentile as well as Jew, and that amidst the various distinctions and legitimate diversities in the kingdom, in the church, there is nevertheless a unity, a unity that comes about because God is one. And so Christ here in chapter 17, on the night before he dies, prays this prayer over his apostles, that his love, the love with which the Father has loved him from before the foundation of the world, might be in them, and that they might be brought to perfection and unity, and that their unity might be a witness to the unity of the Son with the Father. There is one church because there is one God. There is one faith because faith isn't simply a list of opinions that people have regarding their religious convictions. Faith is rather an acceptance, an acceptance and affirmation to the one speaking. And the only one who has spoken and intends to speak is the Father, who from all eternity has spoken the Word. And in the Word there is nothing left to say. That is why there is one faith. So you may wonder if there is but one faith, why are there so many different flavors of Christians, so many different persuasions of religious belief out there. We have to distinguish from faith as a theological virtue that comes about through the gift of God, through the movement of His Spirit, and the various factors that cause disunity and division in hearing that one message. God is one, yet there are many opinions. Not because God necessarily inspires all those opinions, but rather people in their weakness on account of sometimes the darkness of sin, on account of their own ignorance or of where they're coming from, receive things in the mode that they receive them. And I say this not to be patronizing toward those of different persuasions, but rather to, to understand and underscore how God intends the salvation of all through this one faith. Faith that boils down, as St. Thomas would say, to two fundamental principles, namely that God exists and that he rewards the just and punishes the wicked. The idea that Supernatural faith comes about through the realization that our actions in time bear eternal significance, comes about through the realization that there is someone else on the other end of the line, that faith comes about through our realization that the story is far bigger than we could have ever imagined on our own. 
This differs markedly from the idea of simply asserting matters of faith by way of opinion, asserting the Trinity as one opinion among many for how to explain the mystery that is God. Rather, we have come to believe and know in the love God has for us in Christ whom he sent, and the very dynamic of the gospel boils down to those two principles that St. Thomas underlined from the letter to the Hebrews, that God exists, in, and in Christ, God reveals himself as Father, he reveals himself as one who identifies with us, and that he re rewards the just and punishes the wicked, namely, that in Christ's redemption, we see how we are meant to be heroes, disciples, in following him. And we see the warning of what it takes to work against him, to reject him, and what that risks as well. We are meant to be one because God is one. And there is division in our world because of the mistakes others have made. But if we're really, if we're really honest, we know also that the divisions in this world exist because of the sins we have committed, because of the sins that have taken place in the name and in the personages of the church herself. And so, even as we insist in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, even as we insist that God's just as God is the only creator of the world, so he is the only one to redeem and reconcile the world. And so it is in his scope and plan that every person, every nation under heaven, finds purpose and meaning. So also we have to be humble in all of this, understanding that we cannot fully represent and convey the love of God, try as we might, and rightly try as we might. But we can only do what John the Baptist did, namely point out the work of the Lord as he comes. For he does not remain silent, though ascended into heaven, and he does not remain removed from us, although he is higher than any of the angels, but rather in ascending he has directed our gaze upward. And in doing so, as we follow his trajectory, a trajectory that we ourselves are meant to follow, and as we are caught up in the very dynamic of human nature in its final and definitive exaltation in the Son of God, an exaltation we share in, we, in that invitation, can extend to all of goodwill, of every persuasion, a sense of the scope and sweep of their lives. And to whatever degree they can understand it, let them understand it. And to whatever degree they do not, let us not hold it against them. For God does not intend to either. And to whatever degree it may well be their fault and isolate them, well, we're in sales and not management. We know we will be one in heaven because God is one in heaven. And we know that whatever division or sadness remains, God will restore and heal and mend what has been broken. And any tear that need be shed and indeed should be shed, God has promised that he himself will wipe that tear from our eyes. So let's not hesitate. Let's continue and follow the Lord as we await Pentecost, as we await the full outpouring of the Spirit, that his love may be perfected in us by greater and greater degree, that we might attain the full measure and stature and maturity of Christ Jesus.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appealed, appeared to all his disciples, and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, and that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our Holy Father, St. Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, Please to confirm in faith and charity the Pilgrim Church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. As the gracious is the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we come admit us to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you, you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I go. For if I do not go away, the, para the paraclete will not come to you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the weakness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, that the power of God cast, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.